Champaign, Illinois. Population 70,000. The streets are clean and the neighbors friendly. In a cozy corner of this modest community, you'll find Volition Studios, a small but distinguished collective of like-minded video game developers. It is from this unlikely locale that our story unfolds. Between 2006 and 2015, the Third Street Saints struggled to find an identity. Saints Row 1 was a great game that pushed the urban sandbox genre forwards, but it couldn't step out of the shadow of the monumental GTA San Andreas. Saints Row 2 was more silly and absurd in an attempt to break away from the very serious GTA 4. And as we said goodbye to the Saints, everything went more and more over the top. A zombie invasion, a trip to hell, superpowers, and an evil alien overlord called Zinyak. It's fair to say the Saints have come a long way since their humble origins on the streets of Stillwater. The biggest upset for fans of the series would come many years later though, when the Saints Row reboot launched in 2022. Volition once again decided to change Saints Row's identity and ignored everything that made the franchise great. Rather than focusing on gangsters and guns, the new Saints were a bunch of college grads, crudely designed to appeal to the widest possible audience. Even for a series that's changed so much, this was a new low for Volition. The decision to change identity had once again backfired. Brunch is a time for friends and mimosas, not debates on morality. Overall, there was a general consensus that certain design choices held the reboot back. Not only did it feel like a game from 15 years ago, but it was also broken when it launched. Visual glitches and game-breaking bugs flooded the internet, and the controversy surrounding the new Saints continued to grow. Saints Row was quickly labelled as one of the worst games of 2022, and its poor critical and commercial reception even led to Volition being shut down after they celebrated their 30th anniversary earlier this year. This once great studio had too many recent misses, with Agents of Mayhem and now the Saints Row reboot. But look, it's been a year since Saints Row released, and before Volition stopped working on the game, they delivered a series of patches and three pieces of DLC. Many issues have now been fixed, and the DLC has new paid missions and new areas of the map that we can explore for free. Now the game has been patched and the dust has settled, is the Saints Row reboot finally the game that Volition intended it to be? Before we start, I want to lay out my credentials as a fan of the series. Over the last year, I've reviewed Saints Row 1-4, to and I've seen how each game evolved since 2006. I've discussed why I think certain games are great, and why I dislike others, and you can watch those videos to hear my full thoughts. Essentially though, I enjoyed the games in this order, with Saints Row 2 being my favourite. I've also played around 50 hours of the Saints Row reboot, I've played every piece of content including DLC, beaten most activities from start to finish, and I've even built the Saints Tower at the end of the game. All of this will be important, as we'll answer one key question throughout this review. Have the updates significantly improved the game, or is the Saints Row reboot still terrible one year later? One of the biggest things Volition has changed since launch is improving how Saints Row feels to play. To me, this is one of the most important features of the franchise, as even going back to Saints Row 1, the combat has always been great. It's always felt arcadey with generous aim assist, and enemies die after a few hits to make us feel powerful. Saints Row 3 arguably has the best gunplay in this sense, where the best part about the game was going around the map and clearing out gang operations. On launch, the Saints Row reboot didn't quite hit the same high notes as the previous games. The combat system had issues like enemies being invincible when they triggered their dodge animation, or an aiming system that didn't work as intended. One year later, this hard work has paid off, as this is one of the areas that Saints Row gets right. When it works, but we'll get onto that soon. We have a good variety of weapons, ranging from an energy revolver that locks onto our target, to a jet-propelled American football that sticks to our enemies and sends them flying through the air. That last one is really cool by the way. The enemy variety is also great, with three rival gangster fights just like we had in Saints Row 1 and 2. The idols, for example, have an enemy that uses spinning batons to create a temporary shield. We then have to wait for an opening before we attack, or get one of our homies to distract them. Marshall, a gang with a futuristic Wild West theme, uses holographic decoys to confuse us and drops snare mines to trap us in place. The final gang, Panteros, aren't as strong, as they're like brute enemies we see in other games, but they do help in making the game more varied. These gangs have a really creative design, and it's one of the ways that Saints Row stands out compared to other third-person shooters on the market. Volition did a great job here. 
Things do fall apart for other enemies though, as Volition includes some of the worst bosses I've seen in a long time. Most mini-bosses form the worst type we have in gaming, a regular enemy that's slightly larger and has a massive health bar. Volition has made regular enemies less bullet spongy, but the mini-bosses are still a nightmare to fight. When a mini-boss spawns, we simply unload our weapon into them to whittle down their health bar in the most basic way. Volition does try to make some mini-bosses more engaging by adding unique mechanics, but then they use ideas we've seen in games over the decades. There's one mini-boss for Marshall that's like this armoured cowboy wielding two miniguns, which is a good idea. But then, in order to take them down, we have to wait until they overheat, shoot their canisters, and then go around their back to shoot their weak spot. Stop me if you've heard this one before. The main bosses are actually worse than this, and I was genuinely angry every time I fought them. The worst example is the final boss in the game when we fight off against a character called the Nawali. This is the final boss fight in the game, and all we do is chase him through a level, landing pot shots on him before he scurries away. I personally thought that firing rockets at him would do the trick, but he just shrugs them off like he's the Terminator. This goes on for about 5 minutes before we face off against his final form, which in this case is just him in a helicopter. He has no unique attack patterns or interesting moves, he just fires for a bit, leaves us an opening to unload more rockets, and then just shoots us again. You Arguably, these issues are minor compared to one thing that ruins the game on console. This is something I noticed as soon as I started playing Saints Row on my Series X. It was instantly clear that something wasn't right. In the very first mission of the game, I noticed my aim would randomly speed up, making it difficult to aim where I wanted to. I initially thought this was due to the thumbstick dead zone and sensitivity, but no matter how much I adjusted the controls, nothing worked. I soon realised it's actually an issue with aim acceleration. Sometimes our aim is sluggish and takes ages for aim acceleration to kick in, other times it's the opposite and everything goes into overdrive flinging our aim across the screen. This means that combat becomes frustrating as we're constantly wrestling with the controls just to get our aim on target. Hopefully you can see here that my aim is speeding up at random points making it hard for me to shoot. It's quite hard to show this as it's something that's much clearer when you play the game. But I will say, if you're thinking about playing Saints Row on console, be prepared for this issue. To be clear, this doesn't mean Saints Row is unplayable, as we can use Fire Name to lock onto our targets, like we can in Red Dead Redemption or GTA. This is something that Volition has improved since launch, and for the most part it works well. But I don't know if this is what I want from a Saints Row game. Saints Row has always been about run and gun gameplay, where we play more like a conventional shooter with free aim, rather than locking onto our targets like we do in the reboot. Elsewhere, there are still bugs in the game even after all the updates. Most are minor and don't break the game, but the fact we're still seeing these mistakes over a year later is not good. I'm just going to list a few of the bugs I saw, and you'll see what I mean. When people shoot from a car, sometimes their arms clip through the roof. Sometimes NPCs or cars get stuck together in the open world, like they'd spawned inside each other and couldn't come unstuck. The weirdest one of these I saw was when an object phased out of a tank, like the tank was giving birth. Then the object landed on the floor and faded out of existence in front of my eyes. You're seeing that too, right? It's not just me. There are still loads of glitches related to animation. In the main missions, our crew will slide into their place, or slide back into the position they've just been in. NPCs will also teleport into our car in the open world, which was a persistent issue in all parts of the game. I noticed misaligned objects in the open world and on our character, and cars will randomly explode in the distance for no reason. These bugs are more immersion breaking than anything else, and to be honest they added a lot of funny moments to my playthrough. The thing is though, there are still major bugs in the game. Crashes are the most obnoxious of these, as it forces us to reboot the game and lose progress if we're on a mission. Other times we'll lose control of the game when our menu freezes. In both instances, I had to shut down the app on Xbox and reboot the game. This was an issue during insurance fraud, as cars wouldn't spawn in for me. I tried saving at our headquarters to fast forward time, and also reloading an older save, but this didn't fix anything. The only way to fix this bug was to close down the app and reboot the game again. 
and a couple of times my minimap wouldn't update in the open world, so I had no idea where I was supposed to be going. When I tried to reload an older save, the game got stuck on an infinite loading screen, which meant I had to close down the app and reboot again. To be fair, the autosave is good here, so we don't lose hours of progress when this happens. It's just more frustrating than anything else, especially if you have a narrow window to sit down and play something. I make these videos around my full-time job, so anything that slows me down when I finally have time and motivation to work on these videos is like being punched in the gut. Let's just say if I wasn't reviewing Saints Row, I'm not sure I would have carried on. One time, in fact, I was so close to quitting due to the appalling state of the audio in the game. The audio is still so bad that I can't believe Volition has not fixed this over the past year. The audio when we're driving is horrendous, as it's almost impossible to hear the sound effects. Whether it's the car engine that's so quiet you don't notice it's there, or the siren of a police car that's turned right down in the mix. Because these effects sound so lacklustre, it robs moments that should be intense of all spectacle. You can see that here, where I'm towing this meth lab through the desert, which should be a great moment. We should hear the roar of our engines, the police sirens blaring, and the sounds of gunfire behind us. But we don't. It plays out like the volume is stuck on low, and as a result the entire sequence falls flat. I'll play the clip now for you, and I swear that I haven't edited this. You can hear that when my character speaks, it's at the right level, and everything else is way too quiet. Looks like I pissed off the meth dealers. Other times, sections in the main missions have no music to accompany them, which was also an issue that Skill Up highlighted on launch. There are a handful of moments where old school hip hop tracks play, which always worked well, but there are also too many times when there's no music at all. There are full blown shootouts that fall flat because there's absolutely nothing to ramp up the intensity. I mean, compare these two similar moments in Saints Row and GTA V, and you can see the problem here. Smaller than I remembered. Hey, offer's still good. Tell me where the Nawali is, and I won't kill you. Rest of you doggies are fair game. Time to face the music. Ah! Sweet mother of shit. Get the fuck off this guy. At times, things were so bad with the audio that I was having flashbacks of playing the GTA Definitive Editions, which also had similar issues. In San Andreas, the radio was sometimes really quiet, and characters' mouths were often out of sync in cutscenes. Well, both of these issues are still here in Saints Row. Like here during this moment, where we're supposed to be giving this inspirational speech to rally the troops. This is supposed to be a key moment in the game, but all of the drama is ruined because everything is out of sync one of them without being told that your time will come you just have to wait be patient well let me tell you something we're fucking done waiting the issue with the radio being too quiet is also here which made me think i was going crazy every time i got in a vehicle sometimes the volume on the radio was so quiet i couldn't hear anything but then other times it was fine I actually thought Volition patched the game during my playthrough and fixed this issue, but they didn't. I checked which version I was playing from start to finish, and it was exactly the same. I have no idea what this is about either, but if you experience something similar, please let me know in the comments so I know it wasn't just me. And finally, before we move on from the audio, there's one issue that I've never seen in any game. There's an issue where some of the audio files in the game are corrupt, or bugged, or something else, I'm not actually sure. But I saw this multiple times, where the audio breaks and this distorted sound plays in the game. I'll play it now, but I've turned it down slightly because it was so loud, it genuinely hurt my ears every time it happens. So yeah, I almost stopped playing after 5 hours because of these issues with the audio. Everything was falling flat and I wasn't enjoying the game. 
Thankfully, these issues weren't constant and didn't ruin everything, but I'd still say around a third of the audio is broken. It's an issue that was present on launch, and it still hasn't been fixed. So look, the work that Volition did over the past year isn't looking too good so far, is it? But it's a good time to say that it's not all bad here. One area of the game that has some positives is the open world, and this is where Saints Row's best gameplay lies. There's a great loop here where we explore the map and tick off markers in the form of discoveries. This doesn't sound that inventive on the surface, as I'm pretty sure we're all fed up with the Ubisoft style open worlds. But the difference in Saints Row is that most of the map markers aren't shown to us on the map, and we have to discover them on our own. There are golden dumpsters to search through, which are a nice take on the classic video game chests. There are car parts hidden away that we use to unlock unique vehicles. And there are shooting ranges where we shoot targets to unlock new weapon mods. Some of these weapon mods are really cool, like a Star-Lord themed taser. The best discovery though involves our in-game camera, where we take pictures of interesting things in the open world. They dial into that feeling of virtual tourism as we explore this world taking in the sights. Because Volition wanted Santo Aleso to be like a theme park, it means there is always something interesting to see. Giant mascots as we explore, buildings with an interesting theme, or even a huge rock formation in the shape of a panther. Nine times out of ten, I was impressed whenever I stopped to take a picture. It's a massive step up from the bland world of Steelport that we had in Saints Row 3 and 4, and it's good to see Volition heading in the right direction for their open worlds again. Now, there are of course issues with the open world, and that's really because everything is superficial and feels fake. Firstly, the population density is low, where we only ever see a handful of people walking around. Restaurants and cafes are completely barren, or people are standing around not doing anything. Some pedestrians are programmed with unique animations, like sweeping the floor or eating food, but this is something games have featured since the mid-2000s. Most times the immersion breaks, as we'll see the same animation used to pad out the game. We'll see things like people stopping to take photos at tourist spots, or a band playing in a bandstand. Then we'll walk about 20 metres down the road and see another band in the same bandstand. We also don't see the Saints patrolling the streets enough compared to previous games. This means it's rare for the Saints to get involved in combat with other gangs, or rush to our side to help us win a fight. This was a core feature in the early games, which helped create those crazy sandbox moments. We'd start a shootout with the cops, only for the Saints to rock up, turning everything into an all-out brawl. It created emergent gameplay from simple moments, all because of the sandbox. And unfortunately, we don't have that here. Apparently, Volition has added more Saints to the world over the past year, but they still haven't gone far enough. We don't see the Saints ruling each neighbourhood, and as a result, we never feel like the leader of a gang. Like, we can't even recruit Saints off the streets. We can't press up on the D-pad and get them to join our squad. The only way for the Saints to join us is by using an ability in combat, like we've just triggered a summon spell. It's a baffling design choice that never feels the same as the previous games. The most disappointing thing though, is that all of the great work that went into designing this open world went to waste. We have a ton of cool buildings with interesting themes, but then we can't go inside them. We can't go inside the cool casinos, the interesting bars, or the tourist attractions, as most places are abandoned or under refurbishment. Sure, Volition said that the open world is designed like a theme park, but in reality, it's more like a theme park where we can't go on any of the rides. For example, I was gutted when I found this arcade in the desert, with machines outside on display. I saw that the games included Zombie Uprising and Saints of Rage, from Saints Row 2 and 4. But yeah, we can't play on either of these. They're just assets placed in the world, and that's it. Surely it would have been good to add these features in with the DLCs and patches, like we've seen in Cyberpunk with Roach Race and Osaka 3D. And you know, the best games include these features on launch, like in Like a Dragon, where we can play old Sega games at the local arcade. But no, in Saints Row, we can't do that. Instead, the DLCs chose to expand the open world rather than add some much needed detail. The two new areas of Sunshine Springs and Vallejo are great on the surface, but they're also underdeveloped with more cool locations we can't go inside. Maybe there's a slightly higher population density in both areas, which did make them feel slightly more alive. And we can also go inside that cool bar in Vallejo that contains pictures of different pets, which I guess belong to Volition's developers. But, and this is a big but, these slight improvements don't do enough to drastically change the open world. Unfortunately, it's still miles behind modern open world games, 
and somehow worse than games we had on the Xbox 360. I mean, look at Saints Row 2. Saints Row 2 has an outstanding open world, with massive interior spaces and a ton of unique NPC interactions. Even Saints Row 1 had more realistic pedestrians than this, who actually got up and walked away, rather than being stuck in their animation loop. Playing Saints Row after all the updates, it's obvious that Volition were fighting an uphill battle, because even if the open world was padded out, the combat improved and the bugs fixed, there are far bigger issues that are baked into Saints Row's core. Issues that can't be fixed with patches. And what I'm really talking about here is the narrative. The narrative is confused, poorly written, and so outrageously bad that it's hard to believe this is a modern game released in 2022. Apparently, the odd line has been changed in certain missions since launch to try and improve the narrative. But yeah, I didn't notice anything that was good here. Their changes haven't solved anything. At first though, everything starts off on the right foot. We're at a party at the Saints HQ, and after a slightly cringy sequence where we livestream the party from our phone, we see our character being buried alive before we flash back to a few months earlier. That's intriguing, right? How did the events of the game get us in this near-death situation? Hmm. Interesting. I sure hope the payoff at the end of the game is worth it. We then play the first mission, where our character is working for Marshall. Here we have to capture the Nawali, who's hiding out at an abandoned Wild West theme park. The level design here is great, as we fight past plastic horses, through a haunted mine, and then finish the fight in the local saloon. We also end with an impressive set piece as we cling onto a VTOL jet. You can see the influence of Saints Row 3 immediately here, which also starts with an over-the-top set piece. Unfortunately though, there's a huge gap in quality between the solid Saints Row 3 and the awful Saints Row reboot. The set piece in Saints Row 3 is a bigger spectacle in every way, as we hang off a bank vault being lifted from the top of a skyscraper. We slip and slide as we struggle to keep our balance, all while a badass soundtrack plays in the background. In the Saints Row reboot, we don't have any of this, and like most sequences in the game, it falls completely flat. Had enough. You can clearly see that Saints Row 3's opening is so much better, and the potential of the interesting setting and premise never quite pays off here. We're then introduced to our crew, and this is where the problem starts. Because, as we all know, the new saints are actually college grads who get into crime to pay their student loans. Which is one of the most ridiculous sentences I've ever said out loud. It doesn't work on any level because it creates this weird tone where one minute we're hanging out discussing pointless shit, like buying waffle makers or who's going to get snacks for our board game night. But then the next, we're robbing a bank, or planning a heist, or murdering people without a second thought. Every time I saw these characters holding a weapon and trying to look tough, I laughed out loud because it looks so unbelievable. I mean, are you trying to tell me this guy is a hardened criminal? Can I have a white wine spritzer? I think Volition was going for a more lighthearted tone, similar to Watch Dogs 2, where we're a younger crew dealing with problems of the modern world. Watch Dogs 2 also had issues with its tone at times, but you have to admit it made sense on a basic level. Our crew was made up of hackers, and our mission was to take down a giant tech company. Ubisoft also designed our main character Marcus to work within this theme. There's a big difference between Saints Row and Watch Dogs 2 though, because our main character hasn't been designed to fit in with a theme. Because this is a Saints Row game, we need the option to create anything we like. I tried to make my character look badass, which to be honest was really difficult with this art style. But I gave him a scar, a big moustache, and chose a deep voice like he's a grizzled cowboy. But then this creates a problem, because clearly my character is older than this crew, which made me ask why they were hanging out in the first place. How did these college grads become best mates with this cowboy? Did they meet in Wild West studies or something? Did the crew get a job herding cattle during their senior year? Everything gets much worse when we team up with the Nawali. Not only does it make no sense why the Nawali would risk working with amateur criminals, but there's also a moment when we go on a team building day when we all learn the power of friendship. Like, are you actually joking? Yeah, I'm not making this up, this is actually in the game. It comes at the worst time too, just as we're about to rob a train, but instead we're wasting time pissing about getting to know each other. There was this moment when Nawali asked why we weren't planning the heist, and I was like, yeah, why aren't we? Why are we wasting time on this pointless bullshit? Look, 
this could work in a different game, as I do get what Volition was going for. It is a funny premise for a hardened criminal and college grads to go for a day out together, but it just doesn't work in a Saints Row game. At best, it's like a poorly thought out parody, and at worst, it's like a daytime sitcom full of unfunny jokes. Eli threw out the idea that we should spend a day doing some team building exercises. You know, so we can really get a sense of camaraderie. We have hats. I thought we agreed to use the fleur. This is better. I'm with Nina. I have so many questions. And that, my friend, is what team building is all about. Above all, these characters are completely unlikable because it feels like they've been cynically designed by committee. It's almost as if a group of people got together and came up with traits and hobbies to make the characters more relatable. Eli is a computer nerd and the brains of the operation. He's also into live action role playing, just so we know he's properly engrossed in nerd culture. Nina is into fast cars and knows how to fix them, but then she's not a stereotype petrol head because she's also into art. Kevin is into fitness, which we know because he infuriatingly never wears a shirt, but he's not a typical gym lad because he's also into baking. And how do we know he's into baking? Well, because he talks about baking at random points in the game in the middle of serious conversations. Look, man, I know I normally do savory, but I can bake the shit out of some macaron. <laughs> Macaron. Sure, this style of writing is annoying, but it's also forced and ham-fisted, like the writers are hell-bent on telling us these characters aren't one-dimensional. Good writers don't do this. They write characters to be like human beings, who gradually reveal information about themselves in subtle ways. They don't write characters to speak like this, where they simply say everything out loud at random points in the game. It's really poor across the board, with some lines that are laughably bad. Don't go mistaking us for friends. This was business. You interfere with Marshall again, and you'll get the horns. Macaron. By the end of the game, I was completely fed up. Fed up with the awful lines, the unlikable characters, and the outrageous plot points. Volition really has saved the best until last, though, as Saints Row has one of the worst endings to a game I've ever seen. We already know that we got buried at the start of the game, so what actually happened? Well, it turns out that the Nawali double-crossed us out of nowhere. He stabs us in the back because he now realises the power of friendship. He sees how good of a friend we are with our crew and he wants that for himself. In my opinion, he's jumped the gun here. I'm sure after a few more team-building exercises, these characters could become BFFs. I mean, where was the mission where we all go clothes shopping and the Nawali gets a glow-up? We eventually escape and the narrative goes from bad to terrible. We catch up with the Nawali and see him replaying earlier events from the game as he pretends to be our character. The camera then zooms out to reveal our crew are being held hostage on a soundstage. I know, it's so ridiculous. In writing, in execution, and the fact this is a Saints Row game. After that woeful boss fight against the Nawali, the gang's back together and the narrative finishes on a positive note. We watch the sunset and we all say how much we love each other. <laughs> I don't know about you, but my group of friends don't talk like this. If this was my mates, and I just saved them from a soundstage where they're held hostage as a man called the Nawali tried to perfect his acting, they'd just be like, cheers mate, that was a bit rough. Then I'd be like, it's alright, don't worry about it. Then being British, we'd all apologise for something. Volition went on record when Saints Row was released, and said that these themes and the design of the characters was their decision. Although it came out recently that apparently Volition's publisher forced this onto them as they wanted the game to be about friendship. Either way, this is a red flag because designing core parts of any game with profit in mind doesn't end well. Sure, the cost of making games is astronomical these days as studios have to make money or they go out of business. But the best games are always designed with an artistic vision, not a monetary vision. It's concerning that we're seeing this happen more and more in gaming. We saw this with Redfall earlier in the year, where Arkane Austin shifted away from their immersive sim roots to build a four-player co-op shooter. 
Their previous game Prey is one of my favourite games of all time, but in reality, Prey didn't sell well. It's one of the reasons Arcane changed course and tried to make a game in a more popular genre. And if it's 4 player, that means you'll sell 4 times as many copies, right? Well, no actually, because Redfall was a disaster, because Arcane shifted away from their roots. And with Saints Row, it's the same. Volition ignored the gangster themes of the previous games, abandoned so much of what made the franchise great, and couldn't figure out how to make it all work. They wanted to take the franchise in a new direction, but then they wrestled with the fact this still needs to be a Saints Row game. That's why we have ventures in the game, so there's a system where we build up our criminal empire. And unfortunately, the ventures are another one of Saints Row's low points. The ventures are side activities we complete to take over a neighbourhood on the map. They would be like the side activities in previous Saints Row games, if the side activities in previous Saints Row games were complete garbage. Now, there are a couple of good ones, like when we build a hoverboard and skate around the city, but most of them are designed like Volition knocked them up on a Friday afternoon when everyone was checked out for the weekend. Most ventures have laughably basic objectives, like we're playing a game from 20 years ago. Steal a food truck and drive it across the map. Steal a toxic waste truck and drive it across the map. Steal a planet saints truck and drive it across the map. I'm not exaggerating when I say that most ventures play out like this, but it felt like I spent hours driving a slow moving vehicle across the map disguised under different premises. It's really frustrating because Volition makes the ventures sound interesting in their description, but then they don't deliver on the gameplay. One for example tells us we're going to set up a pirate radio station, which sounds really cool. But then we just have a wave defense mode against each gang and then we head into the open world to bounce off radio towers. Other times we're involved in a heist and we scope out our potential targets, which again is really cool. But then there's a glaring issue here because we don't actually complete the heist ourselves, we're just a getaway driver and never go inside any of these locations. I kept on thinking the ventures would improve as we got into higher tiers, but they didn't. There is no difference in quality between a cheap tier 1 venture and an outrageously expensive tier 4 venture. I always left each venture frustrated because I'd wasted my time earning enough money to build them only to be slapped with repetitive gameplay and very little reward for my efforts. The tier 4 ventures for example cost a whopping 1.6 million dollars to build. Based on the economy of the game this is an insane amount and takes a lot of time. We have to build different ventures in order to earn hourly income, and then to make sure they earn the maximum amount, we have to beat every level and clear out all threats in that neighbourhood. It got so bad that I left my Xbox running to earn cash every hour, rather than actually playing the game. At least that way I could go play something else while I waited, rather than waste my time on Saints Row. It's a shocking example of a developer trying to pad out their game by creating an overstretched economy. Like, even when every venture in the game is earning its maximum income, it takes another 4 hours just to build the $8 million Saints Tower. And yes, I have done this, but only by leaving the game running while I did something better with my time. It's honestly not worth it. You might say, well, this is side content, so we can choose whether to complete them or not. And I would agree with that if we didn't need to build ventures to progress certain missions in the game. Some missions, including the main story, ask us to build a set amount of ventures and complete them from start to finish. And like the ventures, most missions are simply not good enough to play through. They fail to match the quality we've seen in this franchise, and like most things in the game, are well behind Saints Row's competitors. This is not fun. A few of the main missions are good, and the quality is generally much higher than we have in the ventures. Some missions have good set pieces, or interesting combat spaces to fight through. I enjoyed fighting through a museum with different exhibitions, or a mega prison when we saved the Nawali. One mission chain in particular is a standout in the game where we take part in Eli's live action role playing. You can tell Volition really enjoyed working on this, as it's the most creative they get. We fight through cardboard forts, inside a giant worm, and we have non-lethal weapons like a foam dart crossbow. Whether or not this should be in a Saints Row game is up for debate, and I completely understand why you would hate this. So yeah, your enjoyment will vary here. The main issues with the missions is that Volition doesn't elevate them beyond their original premise. There's no surprises or interesting mechanics to make them stand out. We'll have a Mad Max style mission where we chase a convoy through the desert, but then it plays out like a standard turret section with a lackluster boss fight at the end. We'll find ourselves at the top of a wanted list, but then we just fight off enemies in another wave defense section. 
or will take part in a fight club on an abandoned island that has some great environmental design, but then it's just a combat arena with weapon pickups and a turret section. The DLC improves this mission slightly, as Boot Hill Island has been reskinned and themed like a nightmarish circus. This DLC also adds a new mode to play in this area, but then it doesn't change any of the core issues. Rather than trying to pad out the main missions, it just adds more content on top of the game's rocky foundations. When I discuss main missions in these types of games, I always go back to Rockstar, because Rockstar are masters of their craft. They make sure to include varied missions across their games, where they'll develop a unique mechanic, use it once, and never again. It's a core design principle that dates back to GTA 3 in 2001, but Volition clearly hasn't learned from this. Even the main missions in previous Saints Row games were miles above what we have here. Saints Row 2 has missions like going to a nuclear power plant to hunt down some toxic waste with a Geiger counter. Then when we escape the power plant in a helicopter, it crashes just as we get away. I think that could have went better, don't you agree, Carlos? Or how about that mission where we go to the airport to attack the Ronin, only to end up chasing them through each terminal in a buggy? Saints Row 3 had that incredible mission set in VR with a text-based adventure, and even Saints Row 4, my least favourite in the series, had that Metal Gear Solid spoof, where we infiltrate the layer of our nemesis with unique stealth mechanics. All of these missions are full of surprises that help the game stay with us long after we've played it. And we do have that in Saints Row, but it's just for the wrong reasons. Nice. You did say we need to have our fingers in more pies. I've got that covered. I spent the whole day baking my ass off. Maybe Volition didn't have enough time to finish the game. Whether that was due to poor management or unrealistic deadlines isn't fully clear. There's a great video by Max McMuscles who looks into this after speaking to an ex-Volition employee. The video suggests that development was troubled with multiple rewrites and a lack of direction. This might explain why the main missions are so threadbare, because Volition were rushing to pad out the game and didn't have time to elevate the missions to the next level. I say this because in the DLCs, we see an improvement in the missions. The missions are unique, have new mechanics, and there's a few surprises along the way. In the Song of Dust and Ice DLC, for example, we battle our way out of a catacomb, all while a Yeti miniboss stalks us from the shadows. And in the Heist and the Hazardous DLC, we infiltrate a hotel by sneaking past guards and lasers down to its underground vault. Then when we get there, we blow the vault from the inside, taking everyone down in one go. I mean, these are the types of memorable moments that are sorely missing in the base game, and it shows that Volition are capable of delivering good missions when they want to. I'd even go as far to say that the combat has drastically improved, especially in the Song of Dust and Ice. Volition mix up a standard encounter by giving us different points to defend, or they'll give us interesting weapons and new abilities to keep things fresh. We'll have a paintball gun that freezes people in place, or this powerful God of War style weapon, a hammer we throw at our enemies to charge up an AoE attack. Unfortunately, the Heist and the Hazardous DLC is really short and can be beaten in one hour, which is definitely not worth the price of entry. It does have solid missions that add new ideas, but come on, there's only three missions in the entire DLC. As this was the first piece of content for Saints Row, it came at a time when Volition were busy fixing the game. Maybe this meant there weren't as many devs available to work on the DLC, so Volition had to reduce its scope. I don't know, but I find it hard to believe this was Volition's original intention. So, after everything has improved since launch, Saints Row is still a monumental failure. Saints Row definitely isn't the worst game ever made, it's better than Gollum and nowhere near as bad as the recent King Kong game. Compared to both of these, Saints Row is a masterpiece. But in the context of modern open world games and this franchise's legacy, the new Saints Row falls significantly short of the mark. There are so many amateur mistakes throughout the game that a professional development company shouldn't make, and at times I had flashbacks to the GTA Definitive Editions. Whenever we see this level of quality in a game, it's usually a case of poor management or unrealistic deadlines. I know that Volition can do better than this when they're given the right conditions. For fans of the series, there really is little to enjoy here due to a complete misunderstanding of the franchise. Whoever made the decision to move away from Saints Row's past and pivot in this new direction went way too far. None of the best parts from the previous games have been carried over from the incredible side content the groundbreaking open worlds, or series staples like being able to recruit homies off the streets. Volition makes the mistake of trying to appeal to everyone, but in the end, they appeal to no one. I really don't know what the future of this franchise holds, but if the higher-ups decide to double down on this new Saints Row, I won't be sticking around to find out. 
It saddens me to say that it would be the only Saints Row 2 that I'll never play again. Macaron.